Maximilian Air gave us his comment. We're going to look at it. Is being a black person in a public building intentionally interfering with lawful business if it's 1965 Louisiana and white patrons and employees are upset even to the point of near riot? Well, it's not 1965, Max, and nothing in this in this video is there a crime requirement to trespass reference to Louisiana. But I'll play your game. I'm your Huckleberry. Is that the black man's fault? I don't know. I don't know. What did the black man do in the public building? Is just being a black man or did he like take a crap on a desk? What did the black man do? And why are we referencing his race? Whatever. Or the employees in public's fault. Are, I, I, yeah. Of course, the Supreme Court has already ruled on that. So we're looking for a Supreme Court case, 1965, Louisiana. We got this one. This is Cox v. Louisiana. This is 379 U.S. 536. You know, Max, you can just actually state the case. That would be great. Anyway, this is dealing with a disturbance of the peace statute not trespass. You may notice the video was on trespass, but he's bringing me to a disturbance of the peace case. We'll, st we'll still deal with it because whatever. The statute at issue in this case is authoritatively interpreted by the Louisiana Supreme Court as unconstitutionally vague in its overly broad scope. There are two, in case you just missed them, there were two standards for review for First Amendment cases that they just listed there. One is vague. Vagueness is a is an element that they look at in First Amendment cases. Overly broad is the second one. They're related, they're often intermingled, but they are two separate methods of review for First Amendment purposes. Statutory crime consists of two elements, congregating with others with intent to provoke a breach of the peace, or under the circumstances such that the breach, breach of the peace may be occasioned. Uh, the first element is is not narrow and specific. The Louisiana Supreme Court, in this case, defined the term breach of the peace as to agitate, to arouse from a state of repose, to molest, to interrupt, to hinder, to disquiet. If if you wear a Make America Great hat, America, make, make America Great Again hat, and you walk through Berkeley, California, you are going to be in violation of the way they interpreted this statute. You will arouse people. You will disquiet them. They will be upset with you. I'm, I'm assuming if you wear one of those pink pussy hats uh, down some small town Alabama street, you're going to get roughly the same reaction. Now, neither of those two things are constitutionally inappropriate. Both of them are protected free speech. And so this statute is overly broad and vague. This is NAACP v. Alabama x -Rail Flowers. This is where they define overbroad. Court has repeatedly held that a governmental purpose to control or prevent activities constitutionally subject to state regulation may not be achieved by means which sweep unnecessarily broad and thereby invade the area of protected freedoms. The power to regulate must be so exercised as not in attaining a permissible end unduly infringe the protected freedom. Even though the governmental purpose be legitimate and substantial, that purpose cannot be pursued by means that broadly stifle fundamental personal liberties when the end can be more narrowly achieved. In NAACP v. Buttons, or Button, I should say, 371 U.S. 415, they tackle vague. Because First Amendment freedoms need breathing space to survive, government may regulate the area only with narrow specificity. Now, looking at this one, this is dealing with a breach of the peace statute. The California law I was looking at was not dealing with a breach of the peace statute. This is not California's breach of, breach of the peace law. Nothing in here is mentioning breach of the peace. It's a different law. The California statute that I was mentioning was any person who intentionally interferes with any lawful business carried on by the employees of a public agency open to the public by obstructing or intimidating those attempting to carry on business or those persons there to transact business with the public agency and who refuses to leave the premises of a public agency that's refused. This is a trespass refuses to leave the premises of the public agency after being requested to leave by the office manager, blah, 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 is guilty of a misdemeanor. This is a trespass statute. This is a breach of the peace statute. Notice the breach of the peace statute. They actually go over it. Somewhere up in here. 
A breach of the peace may be occasioned thereby crowds or congregates with others in or upon a public street, a public highway, a public sidewalk, or any other public place or building, and refuses to disperse and move on. This is not a trespass statute. They're not going to trespass you from the public street. They're just going to disperse the crowd. You need to move on. It's not trespass. <clears throat> So this is also Cox v. Louisiana from 1965. And had you done a modicum of research, since it's the same name, it's the same person by the name of Cox, it's the same state, 379 U.S. 559 from 1965, you would see that they had another ordinance. <clears throat> Let's see, what is the ordinance? Whoever with intent of interfering with, obstructing, or impeding the administration of justice, or with the intent of influencing the judge, juror, witness, or court officer, and there's just charge of his duty pickets or parades in or near a building housing a court of the United States, or of the state of Louisiana shall be fined, blah, blah, blah. This is also not a trespass statute, but this is much closer to the wording <coughs> of this. And the court holds that this, this statute on its face is a valid law dealing with conduct subject to regulation so as to vindicate the important interests of society and the fact that freedom of speech is intermingled with conduct does not bring with it, un, or bring with it constitutional protection. Conduct regulation is another method that you can do a First Amendment analysis. This is U.S. v. O'Brien. 391 U.S. 367, it's a 1968 Supreme Court case. When speech and non-speech elements are combined in the same course of conduct, a sufficiently important governmental interest in regulating the non-speech element can justify incidental limitations on First Amendment freedoms. A government regulation is suffici sufficiently justified when it is within the constitutional power of the government and furthers important or substantial government interest unrelated to the suppression of free expression. And if the incidental restriction on alleged First Amendment freedom is no greater than is essential to that interest. So assuming that they do an analysis where, where the public agency is a public forum in California, which in California it may be, because California has a very broad understanding of what a public forum is, a shopping mall in California is a public forum, whereas it's not a public forum anywhere else in the U.S. that I'm aware of. If it's not a public forum, Adderley would, would apply. And then the government would only need a... Uh, a rational interest and it'd have to be reasonably related to that rational interest and it'd have to be conduct neutral and or content neutral and viewpoint neutral. So assuming that this is a public forum, which we can't be a hundred percent certain of, even though it is open to the public, we don't know that it's a public forum because it hasn't been ruled on yet in whatever specific case. So let's just start there, but assuming it's a public forum and we can, Look at this as a conduct regulation. And the conduct that is, that is specified in here is much more similar to the conduct specified in the second Cox v. Louisiana case. The intent of interfering with, obstructing, or impeding the administration of justice. Interfering with lawful business carried on by employees of a public agency open to the public by obstructing or intimidating those attempting to carry on business or those persons there to transact business with a public agency. So this is very similar, and it's also similar in that they both define a particular area. This one is in or near a building housing a court of the state of Louisiana. This one is in a public agency in the building of a public agency who refuses to leave the premises of the public agency. So it's very similar. Now, if it's, he goes on to say something about, um, if you're not blocking entrances, making loud and unreasonable noise or physically interfering with the business to be conducted, then how can they trespass you? Well, that's if they, if you are interfering by blocking entrances, making loud and unreasonable noises or physically interfering with the ability, then they don't even need to go to uh, 602.1 which does have extra protections for First Amendment protected activities in it, D2. All they have to do is go to 602K, entering lands, whether enclosed or unenclosed by fence, for the purpose of injuring any property or property rights, or with intention of interfering with, obstructing, or injuring any lawful business or occupation carried on by the underlying the owner's agent or the person in lawful possession. 
we can see Henry Wallace where they were they were leafleting next to a uh, tomato picker in the California State Fairgrounds. This they were fine being there because they weren't interfering with people's access to the tomato picker, etc. However, Henry Ball, where they set up a a uh, table to hand out literature in front of a tram stop. That was because they had to redirect the tram and it interfered with their operations. So if it interferes with the operations, in ball will apply. If they're obstructing the exits, in ball would apply. They would be trespassed. That's how they were able to trespass. So if you're not doing that, then 602K wouldn't apply. And so you'd have to look back at 602.1 and you'll see intimidating. And if it doesn't mean like you have to be physically threatening them. It may just be, it may be interpreted as being just like they want to give the person behind the counter their social security number, or they want to tell the person about, about their, them being sexually assaulted. And it's, it may be, it may be something that needs a bit of privacy and they may have to tell the person what it is before they get taken into a private room or the public agency may not have a, a private place for that transaction to be carried out or whatever it is. But the only way that this statute could be interpreted, I think by someone just filming in a public agency is if it intimidates those carrying on the business or the persons there to transact them. If it makes them not want to carry on the business there, that may be enough. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying that's the only way it could be read in. That's the only way that this could be enforceable for someone just filming. And had you paid attention to the video, you probably would have been aware of that. He says, since news gathering and public photography are both constitutionally protected activities, why do you think that doing the act would be any cause of disturbance? I didn't say it would be. I'm not looking at a disturbance of the peace statute. I'm not the one who brought up a case that talks about disturbing the peace. You're, you're, you're comparing apples and oranges. It's a little ridiculous and you should probably be ashamed of yourself. No, sir. When people get mad at public photography, any and all disturbance they create is theirs alone and should be dealt with as such. Maybe, maybe not. It would be a fact-based analysis. If you're, if you're violating people's personal space, I know that's not a crime, but if you're like right up in their face, interfering with them, trying to photograph their nose hairs or something, I mean, maybe, maybe not. If, if you're trying to film them um, discussing in a social security office, trying to film them discussing the, their medical condition or giving their, their social security number to the person behind the counter, that, that might be a disturbance. It might be. It might be enough for 602.1B. I'm not saying it is, but it might be. So anyway, thank you for the comment, Maximilian Aaron. I hope you learned something from it. Um, please, if you're going to do this again, please, if you're going to reference a Supreme Court case, how about you link it? That way I know that I'm finding the right one. Maybe there's another one that you're referring to. I don't know. No one else does either. So please cite the case next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.